Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations in the digital infrastructure industry. I'm Allison Whelan, and joining me today is Jeff Barber from Bloom Energy. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. Always so. my favorite part of any show. <laughs> of course. So we've seen Bloom popping up all over yeah. events all over the world. Um, but we're here in Data Center Alley in Virginia. Can you describe the current power infrastructure challenges the data centers in Data Center Alley and globally are facing and how these complexities are impacted by AI and the growing high density workloads? Is that the only question there? That's a small <laughs> a little, twofer, right? uh, it's, it's a quad for, uh, <laughs> no, let's, let's go with the latter. We'll go backwards. Um, impact of machine learning and AI obviously densification of racks, right? So we went in the industry from thinking, believing that 10, 15 KW per rack was fine. Now, if you're running GPUs, you're looking at 40, 50, 100 kilowatts per rack. So massive densification. Um, that's not always available from your substation or from your utility. Right. So customers are coming to Bloom to supplement their existing power. Take, take the data hall from say eight megawatts to 12 um, by imp implementing Bloom right alongside the substation, right? So, and the, the first part of your four part question there was, <laughs> uh, the first part was regarding um, basically time to power issues, right? So we're extremely busy uh, because we're able to provide on-site microgrid power in months versus many, many years now for the utility. There was a time when any developer believed that the utility would just show up. I right. request 25 megawatts, I get 25 megawatts. Those days are gone. It looks like we're, we're decades out with the aging infrastructure. And what role does alternative energy play in addressing data center alleys, challenges, power concerns, and how is Bloom ready to solve those? Yeah, good question. If, you, if, 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 a, if a single source of power is simply not available, as we see today, um, the, whether it's a transmission issue or a generation issue, doesn't matter. The electrons are not at the building. So most are turning to... Um, most developers are turning to multiple sources, right? Whether that's battery, wind, and solar, which are intermittent. Bloom, in my opinion, obviously is the answer. We're 24 by seven, consistent power, much cleaner than a typical utility. And again, you can have it in months versus many years on site, right? Of course. And with sustainability being a critical hot topic here around the world, what are your thoughts on how the industry can come together to fight climate change and turn to alternative power resources? That's a very big question. <laughs> um, I would say incremental steps, right? There are things we can do today. Um, again, is, is Bloom a, a zero emissions box? Yes, from a pollutant perspective, we don't burn anything. We do produce a very pure form of CO2, but our our emissions are 25, 30% less than any US-based standard, not any, but the average US-based utility. Um, so incremental steps. I, I think also we need to have as developers, and I'm a vendor now, but as a former developer, we need to start having conversations with the tenants. The tenants need to understand that we're overbuilding by 40 or 50% of power they're never going to use. Right. So how do we get the tenants to understand the impact of that? I think that communication needs to occur. Yeah, communication is key always. Yep, always. Well, it was great talking to you, Jeff. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. And we thank look you. forward to seeing you at the next event. And viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, happy networking. Thank you very much.